All right, guys, we're going to do a repeatability test for um, probing a rectangular boss with the Drewtronics probe. Uh, so far, I've been very impressed. I haven't seen any measurements bigger than a .0002 or two tenths. Um, that's pretty respectable, and that's, I, I would say it's more so in my machine than it is in the probe. So I'm going to run this real quick, and we're going to use it and set the work coordinate offsets for X and Y to zero, and then we're going to do a position-only probe function and see what the difference is. All right, here we go. Take you over to the screen. Now, on the screen, what you're looking at here is the probe width of X and Y. These are the probe positions in the X and Y plus and minus directions. Uh, this is the probe operation we did, which is a rectangular boss. We've entered in our X and Y distance hints, which is basically the, the dimensions of the part or stock that you're going to probe and you can see that we've probed to a work coordinate offset zero so x is now zero and y is zero and we did that in the t54 you can select whatever work offset you want to probe in so now what we're going to do is we're going to change over to probe position which is not going to set zeros after it's done probing and it's going to tell us the XY location, uh, NZ, different from where it is now, if there is a difference. So we'll set that to probe position. And I'm going to hit this button. Okay. Okay, so we see that our X and Y have shifted one tenth on each. That's pretty darn good. Let's run it again just for a repeatability test. And you see we're one tenth off on the X and Y widths from where it was before. But we'll run it again and see what happens. Perfect position, we're back at zero on Y and we're one tenth over on X. So currently I'm looking at plus or minus, I'd say no more than two tenths, or plus or minus no more than one tenth actually. Um, I, I'm, I, can't, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the Drewtronics Pro. Um, for the cost and just as a caveat to let you guys know, this model is no longer offered. Uh, the new ones are anodized and have the LED. This is one of the early models. I can only imagine they've only gotten better with time. Uh, but for the cost, wow, absolutely blown away with the performance of that product. Uh, big shout out to Drew Tronics. Thank you so much for making such an affordable product that works so well. Uh, for, for guys like me, small shops that you know don't have big financing and scrap everything together to get machines like this up and running for making parts, it's a it's a tremendous benefit. So keep on keeping on, Drewtronics. Awesome, very impressed. Um, just a little more overview of the probing routines that we have here. These probing parameters here are user-settable. 
And if you have any questions about what's in that parameter set, just go over to the probe help. And it explains what each one of them is with a diagram. Yeah, there you go. So we got your step off width. And you guys can go through these on your own, but each one of them I diagrammed and put a little blurb about. So, and that just loops. Up top, these are all the different probing operations that you have. So these are for outside corners or edges of the part. And everything is, is kind of done as a one-touch setup. I prefer it that way. I like to hover on top of the part not on the side of a part it's just easy to see when you're setting everything up so all you really got to do is it shows you where to put the probe tip before so in this situation you want to put it right uh, on the left side edge of the of the part um, and it needs to be within the step off width which i've got set at 0.375 that's the distance it's actually going to travel off the away from where it is before it goes down and, and comes back in to make its probing move. And of course when it's done it's going to come and park right at the Z0 position. And that, that's pretty much the same for all of these and all of the pages. It's just different areas of what you might want to probe. And I've, I've gone through and simplified it uh, so you don't have to think about everything so much. For example, inside corners, same setup. Look, you'll, you'll just be placing on the inside corner here rather than on the, the outside edge but everything still applies you're still looking at the same step off the edge in each direction whoops I accidentally hit that because I'm trying to look in the camera and so I had to stop it real quick uh, Bosses and pockets, which is what we just did. So you got your rectangular boss, rectangular pocket, circular pocket, circular boss. And you just enter your diameter or your X and Y hints in. Makes it quick and easy. Ridges and valleys. You've got ridge and Y, or, or valley and Y, valley and X, boss and X, and boss and Y. Edge angle. This is if you need to um, do an offset. You can you can actually have this automatically set up a work rotation offset just by clicking this button. If that's highlighted when it's done probing, it will actually shift and turn everything uh, to the angle that it needs to be. I can see where that will definitely be helpful going forward, which is one of the reasons I wanted to put it in. Um, and then of course up here we've got the calibration and essentially you just put your calibration pin in and I, I talked about this in the previous video so I'm not going to go too far in depth on it but um, calibration average XY error that's going to average uh, the error over X and Y probe differences if you want to do just the error for X say you're doing some really precision probing and you don't want an average error to be introduced you can click on this and when you run the calibration it's going to use this and all of its calculations same thing just different axis for y um, most people are probably going to just run it on the cal average but i wanted to give the option um, you know most tripod probes aren't going to probe exactly the same in x and y um, every time on, on every direction. So this is going to help those that really need to do some finite work and want to use the probe rather than pulling out circle gauges or pin gauges. Uh, this is going to help you guys a lot. And then of course over here, this is the probe results. So, you know, say if we we're doing the edge angle, it's going to kick out all that information here. And then it's going to give you your edge delta between the two probe points. So you're going to know how far if you need to knock into alignment. You can use it to align uh, vices or parts on the table. Very handy, very helpful. Quick and easy too. Gotta love probing. Um, 
and then you know you can reset all data you can reset just the x you can reset just the y you know if you want to do reprobes just so you can clean everything up um, but everything here these once you set them will be persistent these kick out and of course uh, your calibration this is going to be set persistent as well currently i've got to work on that because it's recorded and it's holding its value but it's not uh, showing up here in the probe calibration offset um, unless you actually run the calibration offset wizard all right so that's just a little introduction to the probing page uh, these buttons down here you can ignore those those are actually just for simulation mode for playing around if you if you've got it on the uh, on a computer that's not connected to a machine and then of course you know, if you have any questions, you can always just send us a little bit of information um, and be happy to get back with you and let you know anything you're looking to know. All right, guys. Uh, sorry for the shaky hands, but I don't have a fancy camera holder. And then <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and get one. Thanks a bunch. I hope you enjoyed it.